Okay, let's talk quickly about non-invasive ventilation. Exactly what is it? Well, there's CPAP or BiPAP. So CPAP is continuous positive air pressure, and it's a fixed positive pressure that occurs during the whole respiratory cycle. That's inspiration and expiration. So uh, the patient has to fight against it when they're expiring. It's a set pressure, 5 to 10 centimetres of water, and you titrate the oxygen to CO2, etc. BiPAP is bi-level positive pressure ventilation, and there are different pressures in inspiration, which is called IPAP, inspiratory positive air pressure, or expiration, EPAP, expiratory positive airway pressure. Now, the expiratory positive airway pressure in BiPAP is exactly the same as a CPAP pressure, and I'll show you that in a graph in a little bit. Now, we aim for a minimum of five centimetres of difference between the IPAP and the EPAP. And that difference between IPAP and EPAP is actually called the pressure support. So it's how much pressure support you're giving the patient during an inspiratory cycle. I'll show you that in a second. What does it do? Well, it opens the alveoli and it reduces the work of breathing in its most basic form. When do you use it and when not to use it? So... We tend to bring it in when the FIA, when an FIO2 of greater than 50% is required to reverse hypoxemia. We don't use it in patients that can't comply with a mask or have a depressed conscious uh, state or uh, really can't have a mask fitted. So those patients uh, that have been part of trauma or that have had a recent post-operative procedure. So the conditions that we tend to look at using it in is uh, APO, acute pulmonary edema, and COPD. It's controversial in asthma, but if we were going to use it, we'd probably use it in its BiPAP form. So in APO, in terms of mortality, there's no great difference shown between using oxygen or CPAP or BiPAP. However, it does decrease the work of breathing and thus increase the param uh, improve the vitals of the patient. So their heart rate goes down, their uh, respiratory rate goes down, and it has been shown to decrease the rate of intubation. Now, there may be, and there was this was some work done in BiPAP, when the BiPAP studies were stopped, that it may have a slight increase in, uh, uh, in MIs in these patients, but so do all other modalities. So whether you use CPAP or BiPAP, it's, it's more patient-related than the actual process-related. COPD, we tend to prefer BiPAP. Um, and it decreases the need for intubation by about 60% and decreases mortality by a whopping 50%. So it's a very important modality to use. And again, in asthma, controversial, but we'd probably use BiPAP. Um, so really, I tend to go to BiPAP for all of them. I don't really use CPAP very much. I put the patient straight on BiPAP. So what does CPAP mean? It means that there is a constant pressure. As you can see on this graph there, there's a constant pressure provided, and the patient breathes up and down against that pressure. And the minimum pressure is 5 centimetres of water. If you look at the area under the graph that you've drawn of that 5 centimetres of water line, that actually represents the oxygenation. So if you want to increase the oxygenation, you basically increase the pressure. So you increase the area under the curve. The problem with that is, though, that that patient still has to breathe against that pressure. So it may have the effect of increasing work of breathing. What does BiPAP mean? Well, BiPAP means that you're going to have two different um, uh, sort of uh, two different modalities, an inspiratory and expiratory. And it really BiPAP comes from CPAP. So you come through here. There's an expiratory cycle, the machine senses it, and you have an inspiratory intake. The machine gives you support here. It gives you pressure so you can take a bigger breath. And then you plateau, you breathe it all out. The machine says you, you, you can't take any more in, you breathe it out. You come back here, you take a breath. As you take a breath, the machine gives you positive pressure. That's your IPAP pressure. And that allows you to take a big breath, fill your lungs. As they stop, you start to exhale again. So the baseline that we see in the BiPAP graph is the equivalent of the CPAP, and it's called EPAP, your expiratory positive airway pressure. The top of this graph when you're taking, so this is inspiration going up, expiration going down, and the top part of it is your inspiratory positive airway pressure. 
The difference between these two, or this amount of area under the graph, is called the pressure support. That is the pressure support you are giving the patient to take a breath. Now, if we look at it again, this bottom part is the same as calling it the functional residual capacity, and this is the tidal volume. So if we want to increase oxygenation, we increase the area under the graph. If we want to decrease, or so like that, increase the area under the graph. If we want to decrease CO2, we increase the minute ventilation. So we can increase tidal volume, which is this pressure-supported breath, um, and though, or we can increase the rate that it's delivered, and that will blow off more CO2. So increase of area under the graph gives you greater oxygenation. Increase in your minute volume decreases your CO2. So here's an example. We've got a patient that comes in with shortness of breath. Uh, they're on a rebreather. GCS is pretty good. They're afebrile. The respiratory rate, though, is 35, so quite high, and the heart rate is 122. They have a pH that's not too bad. Their PaO2 is 63. Now, this is on a rebreather, so it's a 70% O2, and they're mounting a PaO2 of 63. The CO2 is 37, which is not too bad, and um, uh, bicarb is a bit low, so there's some kind of metabolic acidosis going on there, and your SaO2 is 90%. This patient meets the criteria for non-invasive ventilation because she's on about 70% O2 to bring the PaO2 to 63 so really requires it. You put this patient on BiPAP. What settings? Well, the lowest level you can start on a VPAP is five centimeters, and there should be a difference between your IPAP and your EPAP, so that pressure support, a minimum of five centimeters. Your IPAP cannot go higher than 25 centimeters of water. So I usually start at an EPAP of five and an IPAP of 10, or an EPAP of six and an IPAP of 12, so somewhere in there. What happens to this patient? You put them on this, you start EPAP at, at say 5 and IPAP at 10. The patient does improve. Their PaO2 goes to 137 and the CO2 doesn't increase, so she's not a retainer. The respiratory rate drops, so it was originally 35 and it's now dropped to 28. So the work of breathing is still quite high in this patient. Can we help with this? Well, we can decrease the work of breathing by increasing the pressure support that the patient gets in BiPAP. So if you start at your EPAP at 5 centimetres, which is the lowest you can start it at, you increase your IPAP. If you use the higher EPAP to start with, you can decrease this and leave the IPAP as it is. That may decrease oxygenation a little bit, because remember that's the area under the graph, but you can play with both of these figures a little bit to what the patient's doing. So if you decrease your EPAP, uh, you you increase your pressure support. So all you need to do is decrease your EPAP, which is the same as a CPAP pressure, and you increase your pressure support. Now remember, the area under the graph is the oxygenation, and so you are decreasing oxygenation. But if what you need to do is decrease the work of breathing, because this patient is breathing against this pressure of CPAP or EPAP. So what you want to do is decrease that work of breathing by reducing that if you can, down to its lowest, and that increases the tidal volume, it increases the pressure support the patient gets. If you started EPAP at its lowest, which is 5, then you simply have to increase your IPAP, which increases the amount of pressure support that the patient is given. So that's non-invasive ventilation in a nutshell, very simplified. Listen to it again. Uh, it's very important that you understand the IPAP and the EPAP, the pressure support, and the effect that it has on the patient.